Are you allowed to talk about your personal view of <clears throat> I understand if you can't, don't want to on YouTube Live. Can we just change the word? So um, there's something happening in the society at the moment. Um, and can we call it bare? Like bare necessities of life. Boop, 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 boop. Because I'm sure that's a word that I won't say again. Bare barely <laughs> bare and it's something which involves um, being ill and it's happening in society and um, and it causes restrictions and we're going to call it bare <laughs> the reason that I am doing that is because YouTube has algorithms some of you might think this is a little sci-fi, but it has algorithms which go through every video and it checks for radical content, content. And if you aren't speaking in the way in which the governments want you to speak about bear, then um, they're going to either take down your video or limit its views by hiding it. So what happened to me recently when I was talking about it and I was using the actual word, I wasn't using bear, is, um, is it actually got flagged as copyright, which is weird. So I'm not going to alert YouTube to these types of things by the algorithms going through, because if I say bear, the algorithms can't pick up on it. But if you keep saying that word, then they pick up on it. Um, so I'm going to use the word bear because in the end, if you keep talking about it and you don't talk about it in the way that the government wants you to talk about it, which is basically jab your arm, stick in the jab, boop, boop, boop. maybe I shouldn't even say jab, stick the arm, stick something in the arm. If you don't do this and you don't do the, <laughs> and what else is there? no travel, traveling, um, then you could be considered very offensive. Like you might notice if you type into YouTube, like anything that speaks in particular ways about bear, um, it's not there. Like it's only very much in line with what the government wants you to hear. Maybe some of you think that's a good thing. So what are my opinions? My opinions about bear is that I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I get told that there is this bear thing happening. Um, my mum's had the bear, all her friends have had the bear, none of them passed from it, all of them are okay. It was the same as having the flu. I don't know if I've had the bear. I feel resistant to getting the thing that's placed in the arm because I hate society. <laughs> that's a joke. Because um, cause I don't really like putting things like this into the body. I don't do it when I go to India. I just generally don't do it. And I don't know if all the things of why or why you shouldn't take it is true. So I just don't do it. Um, yeah. So basically, I don't know. What I do suspect is that our society is going to collapse if we keep having very polarized views. I remember in 2011 when my dad or 10 when my dad came over to visit me in Australia my mum and dad I remember me and my dad having a heated debate and I having the opinion that freedom of information would free people it would free everyone from extremist views from hatred from um yeah, loads of things. So the more access people had to the internet and freedom of information and free speech, the more free they would come mentally. 
I now realise that, that was really naive and not true. <laughs> what it does, it seems, is polarise people. And I do feel if we keep having these polarisations, society is going to collapse. And the bear seems like a great way to polarise people. And that would encourage me to get the thing in the arm, to stop the polarisation of people, to help society feel more... settled but it could be the polarization has a really amazing effect in the long run i do think i am becoming more of the opinion that society might collapse in the coming years which is sad it could be because of the bear com combined with the polarizations of views and then also global warming so the combination of all these things could cause the collapse of society a mass extinction yeah i do also think and this is a really unpopular viewpoint and this doesn't mean that i want people to die but I do think our survival is dependent on a radical bring down of numbers of humans. I think 8 billion is pushing it. Unless we get up into the skies or we invent a new te technology, I don't think this planet can support 8 billion. And COVID, the bear, might have been nature's way of trying to bring this to our attention. Um, like in the sense that, you know, if an, if an animal has a disease, it heats up to get rid of the disease. But this could have been another way of like, because nature is very intelligent of trying to bring balance, but we've outwitted it again. I'm not saying I'm pro that. Like, I don't want people to suffer and die. I also think with, I can't say this thing that you put in the arm because that will also be a, Thing that shows up in the algorithms so i'm going to call that the stick the algorithms that don't think look at pictures so the stick um i also think that um that with the stick so stick the stick has stopped a lot of a lot of suffering and a lot of deaths in society and i think it's beautiful that we've invented ways to stop suffering but with the stick comes responsibility because before diseases created a population control and with the stick we haven't considered that so with anything that we do with science to mess with nature there has to be a consideration and if we're going to stop people from dying from diseases then we have to consider what that's going to do with population and this continuous growth of population cannot be sustained by this planet so it's like you know we have to take it's like the beautiful story of the jungle book if you've watched the or listened or read the jungle book like our creativity has to come with wisdom so the stick has to come with wisdom if we stop people dying from the bear and from other diseases, V's, which sounds like iris, uh, if we stop people dying from these things, we have to take into consideration not overpopulating ourselves, which we do not. That never comes into conversation, ever, in conversation with health. So basically, I don't have much of a, an opinion on the bear. I don't think it's fake or not fake. <coughs> I don't think this or that. I just feel that we are being very unwise with medicine. We are doing all these experiments like Frankenstein 
and we're not bringing wisdom into it. I also tend to like to be natural. So my idea of being natural, which in order to deal with the bears of the world would be to go out and eat dirt. I'm not joking about that. I actually think being dirty, dirty girl, I think being dirty is um, a good thing. Yes. Bacteria and viruses are our friends. We have, oh, I said that word. I'm going to call them irises. Irises and bacteria are good things. We have billions of them in our body. They are our friends. The more that we eliminate them from our system, the more that we can't, we, we will be sensitive to these things and have to invent new medicines in order to um, help us. So to be a dirty girl, I walk barefooted. And if I'm walking barefooted where it's not got like chemicals, well, most places in society has chemicals, but I mean, like if I'm walking barefooted on the road, I wash my feet when I come in. But if I'm out in nature and mud, I do not wash my feet. I will take the mud off them. So I'm not treading mud in the house, but I tread the naughties, the bacteria and like whatever else is in there into the house purposely so that I will get it inside me. I also don't wash my hands very often. Um, what else do I do that's dirty? I feed Miss K often gone off meat and I allow her to lick me afterwards. I see this as natural probiotics. I don't eat meat myself but I naturally get all of the bad stuff from her. Sometimes we get diarrhea <laughs> and sickness. But I see this as good. So my advice to you is be a dirty girl or dirty boy. Don't wash your hands. <laughs> this is where everybody clicks off and it's like, she has really lost it. I have, I am loopy. Don't follow me or listen to, well, you can listen to me, like listen to talks, but don't like put into practice what I say about these things in life. Just do it if you feel to. Like some of you are maybe like, yeah, go. I've always wanted to be dirty and they're out there now, like naked, rolling in the soil, like <laughs> And then some of you are like, switch off. So, don't listen to me about these things. You do what you feel right, and that's what feels right for me. Bacteria and irises are my friend. Um, and um, um, yeah, the only thing that I would say listen to me about is when like the non-duality, like in life, like everyone's got to go for what their flow is, and your flow might be completely different and your flow might be to be really clean. And I actually don't judge you and think I'm right and you're wrong because I think that that's not the way life works. It's way more complex than that. And the best way in which to be in this life is to go with your gut, raw feeling, like what it feel, what, what you feel like. Now this is, this is, listen to this. You know, if you're going to listen to anything which I speak about in time, listen to this. When I say in time, I mean like not non-duality. They listen to your gut, that big bulging belly. You know, the Buddha, the Chinese version of him is like, he has a big belly. And that's meant to represent this like big juicy hara that's not like squeezed or tight, but it bulges out when he breathes and it's big and juicy gut it's not meaning to mean like stuff your face with loads of food it's like it's meant to mean this like relaxed belly this relaxed hara yes so i hope that's satisfying chris i now click on and realize